Yeah, he does it for a living, too. Well, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Don't do it for fun. Don't like to. Hate to. Is the recording started? I call the February second, uh, the February twenty third, twenty twenty two, Area Board of Zoning Appeals meeting of Tippecanoe County to order. First item on the agenda is roll call. Eric, thank you. Steve Clevenger, present. Gary Schroeder, present. Michelle Dennis, present. Ed Butts, present. Tom Andrew, present. Jen Decker, present. Quorum present. Thank you. I'll take the first motion. Approval of the minutes. I move to approve the minutes from the January 26th, 2022 BZA public hearing. I second. Have a motion and a second. Any comments or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved as submitted. New business. Uh, we have one continuance, uh, BZA 2068 Co. and Courtney Knox. Uh, they're requesting to be continued to the March 23rd hearing. This would be their second and final continuance. Thank you. I would like to briefly explain the procedures for tonight's meeting. Each case will be heard following a motion and a second from the board. We'll ask the staff to report on its findings. Following the staff report, we'll ask the petitioner to present his or her case, after which Anyone wishing to support the petitioner's request for a variance or special exception will be asked to come forward. After hearing from the petitioner and those speaking on his or her behalf, you will ask those speaking against the petition to present their arguments. The petitioner will then be allowed to rebut arguments raised by those in opposition to his or her petition. Following the rebuttal, the board may wish to ask questions of the petitioner supporters and opponents of the petition or of the staff. The staff will have the opportunity at this time to make any necessary clarifying comments. We will then vote by use of a prescribed ballot. Four votes are necessary to make any decision. In the absence of four votes, either for or against, the petitions automatically continue to the next meeting. We do ask that when you speak that, or after you speak, that we do have a sign-in sheet so that we can get your name and address. But when you do come up to the podium, please state your name and address for the record before you speak. Limit your remarks to five minutes or less. Do not repeat arguments that have been brought up by others. Remember that all visual aids used to support your arguments will remain the property of the board. Cell phones must be turned off while the meeting is in session. Please step out of the room before using your cell phone. And I will take the public hearing motion. I move that they're being incorporated into the public hearing portion of each application to be heard this evening and to become part of the evidence at such hearing, the unified zoning ordinance, the Unified Subdivision Ordinance, the Comprehensive Plan, the Bylaws of the Area Board of Zoning Appeals, the application and all documents filed therewith, the staff report and recommendations to be heard this evening and responses from checkpoint agencies. I second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. And I will take the continuance, please. I move to continue BZA 2068, Co and Courtney Knox, to the March 23rd, 2022 BZA meeting. I second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That case is continued BZA 2068, Co and Courtney Cox out on Jackson Highway. That will not be heard this evening. That will be heard on March 23rd, 2022 at the same time and place. And that is their final request for a continuance. So if you're here for that, there's no reason to stay. I will go ahead and take the first case, please. I move to hear and vote on BZA 2070, Destiny Peters, Blessing Barn, LLC. I second. The motion is second. Brian, please. Staff. Okay. Well, um, this project may seem familiar. Uh, it was originally approved for this use, agricultural rental hall in an AW zone uh, under BZA 2015 in May of 2019. The, um, this proposed expansion of the use 
uh, essentially structural. There's a grass area that they uh, would like to enclose in a kind of an innovative uh, structure uh, to continue to uh, you know, serve their customers and provide some alternative space. Um, <clears throat> it was approved originally for 90 persons, uh, maximum capacity. That's not being changed with this petition. Uh, the hours of operation will also be remaining the same as they're stated here. Uh, but just some of the fundamentals, uh, ag, ag wooded zoning is uh, kind of all over the place along the floodplain and, and ag zone. Um, here's a t look at the site. And here's their simple site plan that gets the job done. Uh, the property was a, a church retreat until it was uh, transformed into its current state. Um, the uh, thoroughfare plan has 900 East as a uh, rural secondary arterial. Uh, parking for this use is uh, more than accommodated uh, for the maximum capacity of 90 people, which is 23 spaces. Site plan has 53, so we have the, certainly have overflow parking available. Um, <clears throat> but again, that doesn't alter the 90 person capacity limitation. So um, <clears throat> the uh, on-site on commercial septic system is designed for 90 persons, and so obviously that is not changing with this petition. Um, and I probably show you an image, but this is the uh, location of the proposed addition. Um, any sort of structural change to the site plan within a special exception usually triggers a new special exception unless the original one contemplated that structure. The original one, of course, did not. And so, um, yeah, here we go. They want to put that up. So it, uh, it is the top of a silo. <laughs> but it's going to serve as a roof for this uh, kind of uh, reimagined gazebo type uh, structure. Uh, but the uh, building commissioner determined that a uh, special exception would be required to um, allow this expansion. Uh, again, uh, very little else is changing beyond what you see here. Um, hours of operation, capacity, uh, lighting will remain as originally approved. Uh, with, you know, fixtures on the sides of the building pointing downward. And, of course, all food and drink is uh, catered in, so there's no, uh, there's no restaurant use here. Um, <clears throat> at its meeting on February 16th, the APC did grant, uh, voted that granting this request would not substantially and adversely affect the uh, comprehensive plan. And uh, <clears throat> in terms of staff's opinions, all the tests are met uh, given this modest expansion uh, just, the uh, just the available structures to the site. So we are uh, recommending approval um, uh, subject to the following conditions. One, that this very unique structure meet all state and local building code requirements um, and that uh, continued compliance with the, uh, the recorded uh, commitment on um, uh, capacity limitations and uh, concerning amplified, non-amplified music uh, be continued with this special exception so that it carries over. So other than that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I do have one question before we get started. Go ahead. With regard to this structure, there will be no amplified music in this structure. Is that right? right. In accordance to the condition. Yeah, it must be inside. It must be inside yeah. and this does not really Right, this is outside. outside. It's a gazebo. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. My name is Destiny Peters, address 9450 East, 500 South. I am the owner of the Blessing Barn, and as he stated, it is a simple grain bin gazebo that we are adding for some like outdoor seating so that guests aren't so crowded inside, they can move about inside and outside of the, the current structure that's there. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the petition? Anyone in opposition to the petition? Hearing none, any questions or comments from the board? You may have covered this, but I see the staff recommendations subject to conditions. Are those conditions part of 
our voting or does the petition have to accept those? Do we have to read that uh, we're approving that subject to those conditions? Yeah, I think the reason that they're there, excuse me, I think the reason that they're there is just to make it clear for the record that this does not in any way vary or change the previous conditions. So my suggestion is that the minute should reflect that when you cast a vote, if it is in favor, it will also be in favor of the continuation of those conditions as contained at uh, item two. Okay, it looks like do we want to add a to our motion with conditions? It looks like this one condition is is new. Is fit, is it is, is that uh, new? A, yeah, that's new. applicable. Yeah, to the, the second new. one is the the second condition is the continued condition. Right. And so which one is new, please? The first one. The first one concerning uh, compliance with building code for this new structure. Oh, okay. That's right. It's Good minor, point. but I just yeah. want to make no, sure. No, I think that's smart. For the record, go ahead and include that in, in the motion. I agree. You want to go ahead and modify your motion? So I move to amend my motion to include the conditions. One and two is recommended in the staff report. And do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a and second. second. And I and assume the petitioner is okay with those two conditions. I don't know if she wants to comment on that. It's, it's what was in the report. We're just modifying our motion to make sure that that is included. Right. <laughs> Okay, so that is part of our, the motion has, or the motion has been amended. Any other comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, we have a motion as amended. And we have a ballot. Two oh seven one. Yeah. Let's go ahead and we can change it. Yeah. I'll do this. Two oh seven one. I got it. Gathering. No, you got it. You were right. No, it is two oh seven oh. It's 207. Right. No, you're good. Yep. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I, we got crosswise on the number, but it turned out we're all in good shape. Right. Should have we should have that filled in place.
I have six ballots in hand and all six vote to grant the special exception for BZA 2070. That special exception has been granted and I'll take our next agenda item please. Once again Steve I have the same question because we have some recommended uh, conditions and commitment and to me if they're recommended they're not necessarily part of the filing. So what's the answer to that? Do I make the motion? I, I think it's, I think staff is saying that those are commitment, those are conditions and a commitment that need to go along with. Yeah, that's our, re that's our recommendation. That's your recommendation. So that motion should be with the condition and commitment. What if the petitioner doesn't agree to the recommend? My, yeah. my point is the they board's at liberty to, to do what it wants. Up to the, up to right. the board. You might start with the bigger. I start with the bigger. I guess I'd want yeah. the uh, petitioner to comment on those before we voted on the recommendations, whether they agreed with them, all of them, or not all of them. So anyway, I will uh, move to hear and vote on BZA 2071 Gathering Acres Event Center LLC. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Dan, we'll hear from staff, please. All right, so we have our second um, case for the evening. It's another agricultural rental hall, a little bit of deja vu here. Um, so petitioner gave, um, Gathering Acres Event Center is requesting an extension of a previously approved special exception. Um, it was BZA 1984. And they're asking to add storage rooms, a kitchen for caterers, additional toilets, coat room, a front foyer, and to expand the bridegroom suites of their ag rental hall in the A zone. The hours of operation would remain the same, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 a.m. to midnight Friday through Sunday. Petitioner does state um, that capacity will not change as they still plan to have events with no more than 297 people and do not wish to expand the main hall area. Instead, they wish to just give more space to the smaller rooms that supplement the main hall. So for this reason, staff is recommending a commitment limiting capacity to no more than 300 people. So the 10.8. Where did it go? Here we go. So the 10.8 acre tract is located on County Road um, 550 South, just east of County Road 500 East. You can see 52 is right here as well. Um, both um, County Road 550 South and County Road 500 East are classified as rural local roads per the thoroughfare plan. Um, the subject property and all the surrounding po properties within about a half mile are zoned A agricultural. Um, you can see this little bit of I-3 up here in the northwest. It's kind of that southern extent of the industrial expansion area of Lafayette. But in general, it's a very agricultural area. Um, there's been no other rezones or BZA cases in this immediate vicinity, aside from the original BZA request, of course. Um, let's see. So on site here um, is the petitioner's home, uh, as well as an accessory pole barn and ground pool. They have various small sheds. Um, they also have this gazebo, I don't know, it's not really gazebo, it's just like a swing area and some other photo opportunities. <laughs> and then, of course, their main agricultural rental hall here. And then this 30 by 40 um, covered outdoor patio area. Um, there's also this small drainage pond here to the southeast corner of the site. Um, a row of mature trees are located along the south and east property lines. Um, the property owner to the north also planted a row of evergreen trees here that are less mature, but there. Um, and he also put in a fence, so there's quite a large barrier there. Um, the same property owner, you can kind of see, also has this very large pond, about 300 feet north to the petitioner's land, so that's also important to note. Um, Agricultural fields surround the site to the north and east. There are single family homes here across the road as well as bordering the home here. Um, draft parcelizations have been filed with APC's office to create eight five acre parcels on this land here to the north. So that would mean eight potential new homesteads adjacent to the subject site. Sorry, I'm getting the mouse wrong here. All right, so per staff's comments, um, the ex total expansion will add 2,304 square feet to the agricultural rental hall. Um, as expected with any expansion, staff thought that you know driveway access, septic, drainage, all that needs to be reviewed by the proper county offices. Um, it's also important to note that in 
addition to this proposed expansion to the ag rental hall, um, a draft parcelization was filed by the petitioner to create two parcels from this 10.8 acres. They indicate that they plan to have um, a home built, homestead built here. So we thought that should also be considered with drainage and access and if something else is going to be put here, it should be thought of. Um, since the original special exception, um, here, I guess I should show this first. So this is their proposed um, additions here. As you can see, it's all these supplementary rooms being expanded, new bathrooms being just expanded, really. Um, but this main space here is just staying the same. Um, but yeah, so since the original special exception was granted in 2018, petitioners have added this covered porch area. You can see, try to point here with the yellow <laughs> behind, um, to the north side of the agricultural rental hall. Um, this was done without permission from APC or building commission. Um, it is used as an outdoor kind of seating area here. I took this picture from their webpage. Um, and it's been up for more than a year, so we would say it's a permanent structure at that point. So that's why one of the conditions we're proposing is that they get the proper permits for this if they do plan to keep it. Um, and they did include this in their site, um, submitted site plan. So it was part of this new special exception as well. So regarding the ballot items, um, Section 3.1 of the United, uh, Unified Zoning Ordinance does authorize the special exception for an ag rental hall in the agricultural zoning districts. Um, the requirements development standards for the requested use as prescribed by the Unified Zoning Ordinance will be met. Parking, vegetative coverage, lot coverage, signage, setbacks, all that is being met. Um, granting the special exception will not subvert the general purposes survive, um, served by the ordinance. Um, granting the special exception will not materially and permanently injure other property or uses in the same district and vicinity. So basically it passed all the tests per staff's review. However, I just want to make one comment about noise production. Um, they did have a commitment that they wouldn't have any outdoor projected noise. And with this new patio they added since the original special exception, if as long as they actually keep that commitment, then we don't think there will be any issue with noise, but it's something to consider. Um, but as long as they do that, then we're commit, um, recommending approval with the commitment and conditions. Um, the commitment being limit the number of attendees to 300 people. The conditions being the six outlined, I'll read them aloud. One, continued compliance with the recorded commitment dated September 14, 2018. Um, document number which states there shall be no amplified music or other sound system outside of the agricultural rental hall and also the office for the agricultural rental hall shall be located inside the residence. Um, an updated site plan that shows the entire property as well as all missing elements including the following signage, in-ground pool, essentially just an updated site plan that's got a little more detail. Three, an approved building permit for the roof 30 by 40 patio structure um, or the structure be removed. Four, five, and six are then the approvals from all those county departments that we think need to look at this again. So with that, if you have any questions, I'll be here. Oh, that's true. We also received five letters, um, all in opposition, so I can read those when appropriate. Petitioner, his or her representative. Hello, my name is Verlin Fast. It's the address here, 5074 East 550 South. This is my wife, Lisa. Hi there. Um, so the purpose of our additions are, um, like they said, we are wanting to um, add on to our bathrooms, um, mainly to add three to four toilets, urinals, to avoid lines where people are able to, you know, not social distance like we'd like them to. Um, Life has changed in the last two years, so there's things that we're trying to um, make work for safety for our, all of our um, clients. Um, also adding a caterer's kitchen so that they have a larger um, space for food to be stored and served without, I don't wanna use the word, but cross-contaminating with the servers, bringing in the dirty um, chargers and so the caterers have better access to sinks for washing their hands and um, for serving the food as well. Um, and it will also- You'll notice on the caterer's kitchen area, it's yeah. right adjacent to where the serving table is so they can actually do a one way in and out and circle around like that. It, it's just be really convenient and handy. And 
Yeah, and it will also let them um, not have to work in the same area as the bartenders and other people so that, that we can keep those two areas completely separate. Um, obviously, it's going to add us more storage space, but most importantly is um, we are wanting to add onto the front of the venue for the main purpose of adding a vestibule. Um, we do know that there is sound that does come out of the building as guests come and go from the front door. It's not possible to, with just a single door, to be able to make that stop. And so what we'd like to do is add to the front and put a, a, a good eight-foot vestibule so that they can, um, the doors will completely shut before the next doors open. And that should um, be a great help in letting any music escape out through the front doors because um, we are aware of that and we don't want to cause any issues for anyone. Um, and the other thing is um, adding the 16 foot on the side, um, that side of the building and the front of the building are the two sides that affect any of our single dwelling neighbors and so um, we're adding 16 foot of, of area that is going to absorb the sound before it can get out of the building from the main room. Um, also, the walls on the building that we build is an 11-inch wall. It's a pole building, and then you have to extend the to put the other walls and the sheet rocks. So. And then you still have most of the existing building that will stay that insulated thick wall area. So when you get that double, double space happening, uh, distance apart like that, uh, I'm really kind of excited in a way because I don't want to be that neighbor that has a lot of noise and I believe this is really going to help matters greatly. Um, as for any noise um, issues, um, we do continually use our golf carts to um, patrol our acreage during events. Uh, we specifically use them to obviously to keep an eye on um, our, our grounds. We do have a pond on site. We want to keep um, our guests safe, and so we do do that. And then we also go to the edges of our entire acreage to see if we can hear anything coming from the building. And if we can, uh, which is very not very often, um, we will go in and get that adjusted immediately. We do that early in the evening to kind of keep an eye on that. But throughout the whole evening, as we are usually out on our golf carts, keeping an eye on um, people, just making sure everyone's behaving. Um, and then um, another thing that we were to, to bring up, we no longer, when we originally did our um, BZA uh, 1984, we had a daycare center in our home. We no longer have that. Um, and so uh, as for the outdoor sound on the back patio, um, it's an echo dot this big um, and so it's just a very small little echo dot that we've ever put any music on the out outdoor patio and I um, did not read this before I came so I wish I would have brought the original um, because from my memory it said that we could have outdoor sound but it couldn't be above 70 decibels and so um, I don't know if I'm mistaken on that am, am I mistaken on that or where's the 70 decibels I know, I know, I know that's the only thing I wish, I, I apologize that I didn't bring that, but, but it is on, um, for the purpose a, of a, um, like a cocktail hour, so it's very quiet, the music is, any music that is there is very quiet, because the only purpose is for ambiance, not for anything more, but for the it, seven it's, years that we did. The purpose is for people to escape the noise inside so they can go outside and visit and, and have stuff. quiet and it's yeah. just different when it's dead quiet I mean it's it's background but yeah um, we did do daycare in our home for seven years we were licensed for 16 children who played outdoors every day from 9 a.m. till noon and 3 to 5 30 um, every day except in the winter and I I can guarantee that all of the squealing screaming crying running around yelling craziness from 16 four and under children was a much larger noise volume than anything that we uh, would do during a elegant event as a wedding um, and we do also have a large family and many grand grandchildren who are at our home we love to entertain so there is always going to be noise in our backyard we have a pool and um, I anything that we would be doing over there would never be louder than what we would do in our regular living so um, and then our bedroom is also 150 feet away from the barn and I cannot hear anything inside my bedroom if I can I make a call over to the building and my husband lets the DJs know to bring that volume down that's not acceptable if I can hear it in my house um, if I can't hear it in my house there's no way anyone else can hear it 
anywhere around us. Um, so, and then we do make sure to talk to every DJ before they um, are, while they're setting up and talk to them about what we find acceptable for noise, you know, for their volume, their bass levels, um, and let them know that if they exceed what we think is um, acceptable, if we go outside and can hear it, that we will be asking them to turn it down and that if they do not comply with that, that we will um, shut down the event. So they are aware of that. So the addition is not to change our occupancy in any way, but to allow us to make our venue safer for our guests as we weather the COVID storm and add much needed storage space and better yet help with any sound issues escaping the venue and bothering any neighbors by adding buffers and especially the vestibule area with the coming and going of our guests. So thank you for your consideration. Okay. So. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the petition? Good evening. My name is Guadalupe Cox. I am the owner of the dress collection at Tipica New Mall. Um, we have been there for 10 years. Um, I'm also a preferred vendor for Lisa and Berlin at the Gathering Acres. Um, I also uh, decorate for them, I would say twice, once or twice a month. And, uh, Can we get an address for you, please? Yes, yeah. my home address is 4450 Fletcher Drive, sorry, um, Lafayette, Indiana, 47909. And um, the store is in Tivica New Mall, 2415 Sagamore Parkway South. And like I said, um, this has helped my business grow as bringing in employees. I have ha have hired four or five employees um, for the community. So it has helped me as my business and for them to give me the opportunity to be a preferred vendor. Um, I just want to tell them thank you. I've, I enjoy working with them. I go pick up every day at night about 11 o'clock when parties are over, or Lisa, Lisa usually gives me a call and says, party's over at 10 o'clock, come and pick up. You know, I enjoy it. And I, I'm here to support them for that thing, and thank you. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the petition? And if you could, when you finish speaking, if you can sign. Hello, my name is Taylor Mextra. My home address is 6062. Sandwood Lane South, Lafayette, Indiana, 47909. Um, Lisa's business and Verlin's business has allowed me to have a job. My husband travels for a living, so I stay at home with my three kids, and I'm able to work at the barn when my husband is home, and when my children are sleeping, I get to go after hours and clean and help and just reset for the next venue or the next setting. And it just allows me to bring a little bit of income for my family and feel as though I am important and can help my family. Um, it's just an amazing thing what they have done and allowing other mothers like me, there's four of my friends that also work there and are able to bring in income um, and just help their families. So it's been a blessing for my family um, especially. So, And I am 100% in support of it. So, thank you. Thank you. Speaking in favor of the petition. Good evening. My name is Susan Gardner. I live at 1938 North 900 East in Lafayette, 47905. I am currently uh, Lisa's personal assistant at the venue. I come in during the week mostly to help her set up, uh, get ready for events. I also do work some of the evening events as well when needed. Um, it has helped me in terms of transitioning from my previous job as home economics teacher at Faith Christian School into being a wedding coordinator, which basically I was doing for people for free for years, and now she has given me the opportunity to expand upon that. Um, I can tell you that Lisa and Verlin pour their heart and soul into their business. Yeah, I thought you were going to cry, not me. <laughs> and I just feel blessed and privileged and humbled to work with them. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking in favor of the petition. Good evening, all. Uh, Rob Holmes. I uh, live at 1807 East. 900 North. 
complete opposite end of town. Um, a prefer preferred vendor uh, <clears throat> for Lisa and Vernon uh, Fast. I have been uh, since the beginning. I th believe we did the second event out there. Uh, very thankful uh, to be a part of uh, a great venue in this community. Uh, this this uh, county has needed this for a very long time. Uh, I got married over 20 years ago and there was nothing like this. Uh, we hosted an outdoor wedding. Uh, this has been a great addition to this county. Um, and I'm super thankful um, for this. Uh, we've done numerous, numerous events uh, out there. Um, I'd like to say that uh, Caterers Edition would be very nice uh, to have our own space. Um, and uh, once again, I'm just so thankful to uh, be a part uh, of this venue. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking in favor of the petition? We'll go ahead and take the letters, please. The first letter is from a Dolores McGee of 5450 South 500 East Lafayette, Indiana 4909. To the attention of VZA 2071, board members, my sister and I live close to the wedding barn who are asking to expand their operation. We are in our 70s or would be there to protest this. There is a large two-story house between our house and the barn. In addition to this, there are large pine trees in the fast own house also between our house and the barn. My late husband and I purchased this house approximately 20 years ago because we enjoy the area and the country life. We used to sit out on our porch and enjoy the quiet evenings together. When they started this wedding barn, that all changed. All the neighbors were told there'd be nothing outside of the barn and it would be quiet. That's all changed now. Almost every weekend, there is loud music being played until the wee hours of the morning. It seems like all you hear is boom, 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 sometimes as early as 2.30 in the morning. Board members, all we want is then for the noise to stop. Please vote no to this special exception. Signed, Dolores McGee. Second letter is signed by Mike and Karen Smith of 5431 South 500 East Lafayette, Indiana 47909. To whom it may concern, Karen and I own the residence to the north and west of the event center. As residents of this adjacent property, I would like to express three concerns. One, the requirements for music from the events to occur only inside the building should be observed. There have been times the music has been played on the north patio that faces towards our home. The requirement is for the music to be within the building. This should not be allowed. Two, the approved hours of operation has not always been observed. Sometimes the events go past midnight and once until 2 a.m. Three, the bass sounds from the music should be limited by some type of measuring device. To summarize our concerns, we would simply like the required set rules to be adhered to so that the business is not disruptive to the community. Signed, Mike and Karen Smith. Third letter here is from Jordan Lumley, 5005 South 500 East. We are opposed to this request for the following reasons. One, our family has farmed out here for over 60 years. Since the wedding barn has been open, the traffic 500 East and 500 South has increased dramatically. This creates a very dangerous situation, especially in the spring and fall with planters, field cultivators, combines, and other large equipment on the roads. The people coming to the wedding barn have no clue what it takes to bring 40,000 pounds of farm equipment to a sudden stop just because they missed their turn or were not paying attention to the big green tractor in the road with rotating beacons on exclamation point. The noise is bad if, too, the noise is bad if there is a south wind. Even though we live one half mile away, you can often hear the deep booms of the rap or other music being played. This in spite of Mark Rathburn's tree lines that he has planted on both the north and south side of his property and our own utility 100 by 300 foot barn separating our property from theirs. The noise is even worse in good weather when they have people and music out on the patio and back of the wedding barn. Please vote no on this special acceptance request and start enforcing the noise issues and no outside events that was originally promised. Signed, George, um, Gordon Lumley. Excuse me. Fourth letter here is from Mark and Don Rathburn, 8049 Newcastle Road, Lafayette, Indiana, 47905. To whom it may concern, as owners of the property adjacent to the establishment requesting expansion of their business, we are opposed to the Area Plan and Zoning Board grant this request for Verlin and Lisa Fast to proceed with this expansion. My wife and I, along with other neighbors, objected to their original request for an event center a few years ago. However, we were denied that request and they were allowed to build and operate the event center. The following are reasons that we've had 
that we had and continue to have concerns of a future structure and business of that size in a rural residential area. One, due to liability, I was advised by legal counsel to erect a fence with proper signage along the property line to deter people from the event center entering, entering our property illegally, which has a sizable pond, approximately two acres. Before said fence was erected, garbage and other items were found by the pond's pier, indicating that patrons were coming over from the event. The cost of the fence, $3,200, was paid in full by me. Two, in conjunction with the event center's patrons' safety, we planted over 1,500 pine trees and large shrub saplings along said fence for privacy and sound control. The cost of new plants was approximately $5,000, paid in full by me. In the original hearing, the event center owners claimed that no outdoor functions would occur. However, that is further from the truth, as it is common practice that outdoor weddings and events take place. With that, there is also an outdoor bar slash beer garden located on the back of the event center facing our property. During the summer months when outdoor functions occur more frequently, the, no the noise and gawking from the event center patrons becomes bothersome. Lastly, the general noise from 200 plus people, vehicle traffic in the event center's robust PA system inside, which resonates throughout the surrounding neighborhood throughout the day and late into the evening, was yet another reason to plant the trees in shrubbery. We respectfully ask that the Area Plan and Zoning Board deny requests for further expansion. Signed, Mark and Don Rathburn. And then the fifth and final letter was from a James Mark Ritchie, Ritchie, R-I-T-C-H-I-E, um, 5115 East, 550 South, Lafayette, Indiana, 47909. To whom it may concern, I live across the street from the FAST. This property has been in my family for over 100 years. With the exception of a few of years after first being married, I've lived here all my life. I've raised horses, pigs, and chickens here. My children and grandchildren have grown up here as well. Our family has three houses on the original homestead. We target practice, ride dirt bikes and quads, operate tractors, etc. things that people in the country do. The FAST have actually come to mine and neighbor's house telling them that they have an outdoor wedding and to please not make noise between certain hours, exclamation point. When the FAST first started this project, they lied to the county and said it was going to be a personal storage building, comma, check the original building permit. This even though they are planning to build a, quote, wedding barn, quote, all along. This is even called out on their webpage. In fact, according to their website, www.gatheringacres.com, this scheme hatched with the, two, with the 2016 wedding of their daughter, well before they applied for their original building permit. When the building inspector figured out what they were up to, they were forced to change to, it to a commercial building and comply with appropriate codes, which required a BZA special appeals permit. The FAST came around to all the neighbors and promised us there would be no outside events, that the building was fully insulated to make sure there would be no external noise, and that they would have private security for events. Unfortunately, none of this was true. Almost immediately, they began having out outdoor events. They erected a large cross by their retention pond next to the road as a, quote, altar, quote. They have another, quote, altar, quote, out by the east end of their property, all of which uses a PA system that is loud, exclamation point. Then they constructed a, quote, beer garden, end quote, in back of the wedding barn. The original special exception permit required events to be over by 12 o'clock midnight. This almost never happens. 1 to 1.30 are common, and 2 a.m. has occurred more than once, especially with weddings. In addition, they've used various fireworks, sparklers, bottle rockets, and on occasion I had lumin lumineers with their candles still lit on my property. Several neighbors and myself have met with the FAST in my garage a couple of times last year about the ongoing issues. The two things most important to us is the late night music and outdoor events. When we mentioned this to the FAST, Lisa exploded with an unforgettable statement, quote, well, well, we've been doing it and we're not going back, end quote. Well, maybe there is a way to go back. A special exception permit is good for one year from the date of being granted. The FAST did not have their first event in that period of time. Therefore, the original special exception permit is invalid. In fact, the three events, if not more, that the FAST held were while the barn was still under construction with just a building permit. I question the legality of that. I'd like to see the current special exception request be denied. In, de in addition, I request that one, the original special exception permit be revoked on basis of non-use, and two, that the outside beer garden be removed. Three, that no outside functions be permitted as per the original representation by the FAST. Four, that all functions have third party security. And five, that the county mandate an independent noise measuring system be installed and monitored. Signed, James Mark Ritchie. Thank you, Maureen. Just a reminder, if you did have a letter, you are not eligible to speak. And at this time, I will take anyone that wants to speak in opposition.
And again, after you speak, please remember to sign the sign-in sheet. Yes, my name is Terry, or, I'm sorry, Lee Elser. I live at 5203 East 550 South, directly across their parking lot. Not only is the noise an issue and the events go longer than what they're supposed to, but especially in the winter, spring, fall time when the trees are not blooming, whenever they leave, the lights come on and shine directly into our house from their vehicles, which then makes my dogs get all riled up thinking somebody's coming in, waking me up, waking the wife up, and also, their sign on the outside is not big enough or visible enough. People are constantly missing their entrance, turning around in my driveway, which also gets the dogs all riled up. Seems like everybody seems to have an issue with the, with the sound. Their new proposal, addition may help with that. If it is granted, I hope it is. Helping with the noise. Other than that, I do wish that it is not granted and uh, the previous one that was granted is relooked at. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speaking in opposition, Hello, my name is Tim Lewis, 5227 East, 550 South, Lafayette. Uh, I was here in opposition the last time. I live directly across the road at one of the structures there on the original Ritchie property. Um, I think it's pretty well been covered, the noise issue. It's, I've been woke up 1.30, 2.30 in the morning with my windows rattling and you know, it's just not how this was supposed to be. Uh, I've had people back up in my yard, instead of the driveway, back up in the yard and turn around and go over there. Uh, it's all the time somebody turning around, like Lee said. It's just an ongoing situation that they're not monitoring what's going on like it should be. You know, if you want to do the deal, do it right. And that's... I guess my biggest complaint and add more to it is not going to help. We don't need any bigger than it is. We've had five of the Lafayette limo buses for a Purdue party, the big buses come in and one evening to haul students in and have their little party over there because Purdue doesn't want it on their property. So they bring it out to the country to do it. And think everything's fine. So that's my standing on the situation. I hope you do not pass it. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking in opposition. My name is, <clears throat> excuse me, Brent Tyke. We live directly to the west uh, of their property. Um, Lisa and Verlin uh, have been pretty good friends with us. We uh, even had our one son's wedding there uh, a year and a half ago. My problem is, as everyone else has said, the noise. The noise, our bedroom faces that direction. <coughs> it's upstairs. We have a balcony. We used to be able to sit out there at night and listen to the you know, tree frogs and uh, owls and stuff. Now, we cannot even come close to watching TV in our bedroom. The assertion that they patrol the property during those uh, times when they're having an event is totally false. There is no security whatsoever. Uh, we've even been threatened on Facebook to have all the guests leave and start honking their horns. Now, I know it's become an acrimonious 
relationship. But they're doing things that were not supposed to be done. And I'm very much like Tim Lewis. I don't begrudge them making a living and doing it a really good job of it. The, the place is gorgeous, um, but they are affecting everyone else's life in that half mile area there. Um, one of the things that really kind of hit home was when it's come to all the permits, they have lied on each permit. And uh, Mark Ritchie, I think, touched on it in his letter. They started this, and it, this is on their own website. They started planning for this in 2016. So when they filed the uh, building permit, filed for the uh, building permit, they knew what they were going to do. There was no reason to file it as a uh, personal storage barn. They should have come out in the beginning and said what they were going to do. They got caught. Same thing happened with the uh, small shed on the far west end of the property, the personal storage. Well, Verlin runs a company called Fast Coolers. You can look it up on the internet. And he builds his coolers in that shed. And there's times that you hear the he takes alum, extruded aluminum, chops it up, grinds it and stuff, and it becomes a, a cooler for your transmissions. The house that they live in, they are renting the top of that out as, I'll call it a bed and breakfast to the wedding parties. And that is a, it's not a commercial residence at all. It is a single family home. Um, you know, there's just, there's too many things that we've been told that have not been true at all. And it's just like the pool. Take a look at the building permit for the pool. It doesn't say, it says no slide or no diving board. Pool's got a slide in it already. So I, I just request that this permit be denied for now and we go back and revisit and come up with a way of measuring the sound because the sound is not coming out of a door when it opens. When, when I'm sitting there in my bed at night and I can feel vibrations, that's not coming from an open door. And it's always the big heavy bass that just, it rattles our house. Um, I, I would like to see something revisited on that permit and a method of measuring it. There's got to be something out there. I'm in the aviation business. I know when we have a plane go over too low or something, we get all sorts of calls over it. So there's got to be a, a mechanism of measuring this. Uh, my address, 5441 South, 500 East, Lafayette, 47909. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking in opposition. Hearing none, uh, there's a chance to rebut. I'll start. I'll, I'll have to really agree with uh, uh, next to in the middle there. I I, I don't want to be that neighbor that you heard just described there. And we all know that there's a, a special issue with the sound. That's what I'm here for. This extra wall, not just the doors opening. It's that buffer area and a whole next extra wall to take care of that noise. It would really help. Right. And, uh, um, as far as the other issues, um, I, I do take exception with being called a liar. Um, <laughs> um, and 2016 was when we got the idea, not where anything happened. So I, I don't know if we rebut some of the things that were said, I'm, I'm going to tell you there's a lot of misinformation there. And um, the one thing that was mentioned uh, about the, um, all the cars honking, we actually had to make an announcement to our guests who told us that is what they were going to do because they were very angry with Tim, um, what's his name, 
Lewis, um, because he decided during the wedding to drive a four-wheeler that is unlicensed up and down the, the road at full speed repeatedly just to ruin the people's wedding that they had spent $8,000 to do. Um, and they were very angry and we made an announcement because we heard rumor of what was happening and we said, don't you dare do that. That is not acceptable. We are not okay with that. So, so out, that's a little, little backwards. At, it, they're out there for 15, 12 to 15 minutes is, is um, an outdoor. And yeah, and, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. If there's something you'd like us to, to respond to, we would love to. I, there was a lot that was, uh, my bedroom again is 150 feet away. Um, uh, my house doesn't rattle, my house doesn't shake, and I don't hear anything inside my own home. I, I, I don't know. But again, this is fine to address the concerns and stuff, and, and we appreciate that, and we want to deal with that. And again, that's why we're here. I can uh, muffle stuff down a little bit. It, it's not going to have any negative effect, but it's going to help. So It should help, yep. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just had a quick question for them. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, can you confirm what your hours of operation are? Uh, yeah, I think 7 a.m. till 10, Monday through Thursday, oh, yeah, till, come till come midnight on Friday through Sunday. Or, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. And just to confirm we, with. We do, we do flip our events. So, like, we have an event on Friday at midnight, the music has to be off, they leave. And then we stay in our own business and clean the floors, clean the bathrooms, and set up the next so, wedding for the uh, next day. So we a, do go late A correction on our part that probably definitely needs to be made is the music's got to come down in the building after midnight, obviously, while we're cleaning and everything, yeah. too. So yeah. we don't always so, go Somebody there. tends to struggle with that. So, yeah. And so the, the, uh, one of the conditions is the continued commitments for the hours of operation and the noise and... Correct. Or the amplified music. Okay. But we need, I mean, we don't have right now, we did not read that with the conditions and the commitment. And I guess I would like to hear from the petitioners about these, the commitment and conditions to make sure that they are, you are agreeable to them. Well, I mean, you know, I, I have mean, them if, here if you need to read if them. If you're agreeable to them, then we're. Um, yeah, the, the, one, or, the only thing I would like to check if we can is the, the one, because I, I, I've read that probably 8,000 times, and, I, and I've, I'm almost 100% positive it does say that for. Did, did yeah, you it? I, I copied and pasted okay. it from it, and it says there shall be no amplified music or other sound system outside the agricultural rental hall, period. So there's nothing Where about decibels. I, the, there was nothing. Usually we don't have anything. Okay, okay. Yeah, we don't have. We don't have a method of yeah. measuring, right. or the county does not have a then. good I method apologize. of measuring yep. right. sound. Okay, thank you. But just to be clear, those conditions that were read earlier about approval from the county surveyor's office for drainage, that may entail a drainage review. Yeah, we're review. working with Vester right okay, now. You're okay, you Yep, yeah. they're, they're there. They were just there last week again. Yeah, we're working with them. 100%. Commercial entrance uh, septic system review. Yes, okay, yes, yeah, that's okay. all being taken care of. So I'll make a motion to amend my initial motion to hear and vote on to include the conditions, um, the commitment, number one, limit the number of attendees to 300 and conditions one through six uh, as uh, listed in the staff report. Second. So the motion has been amended and second. Do you need a vote on that? You should. Do it for the amendment only. For the for the amendment only. Yeah. Just so let's vote. let's go ahead and take a voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries. So the the commitment and conditions are part of the agreement here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions I, here? I go just ahead. had. Go ahead. That question on the commitments and the. Hours of operation. Who enforces? I mean, we all agree that we'll midnight. It's, we're done. But who enforces it? Who should the neighbors talk to if it's not happening? They should contact the county building commission. 
right. and they're in charge of zoning enforcement. So if, if the county building commissioner or area plan can direct you to them too. Can I ask just a quick question on that? Sure. Uh, how do we have proof of that then? Because on Saturday night they called the... Um, if you could just go ahead and come up so it's on the okay. mic. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like to know just how we can prove against that. Um, Saturday night, one of them called the excise police on us um, for uh, saying and said there were people all over their yards. Um, I don't know if any of you were out on Saturday night. It was a bit chilly or have been to a college party. The girls don't wear, as the police officer said, not much more than a wristband. And they is correct. So um, he had been standing at the yeah, door the and not a single night. person had walked out, in or out of the building except from the bus directly into the building. So, so things are being called in that are not truths. So how do we, if they call that, how can we prove it not to be? Do you know what I'm saying? Like how, that would probably be up to the building commissioner mm -hmm. to, and their enforcement policies to determine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they can question. Like our employees as witnesses or such, maybe. Possibly, and, yeah. and, and that's the, good be, the best policy too. is to just a, right. avoid any. Mm -hmm. Okay. No potential issues. I mean, don't turn down. Make sure the music is down. Mm -hmm. at that yep, time. I, it's so. it's in our contract. At 12 p.m., music must stop. So what it, it's what it says, and so they're they're against it if they if they continue. So, okay, thank you. Yep. Gary, you had something. More of a procedural question to kind of follow up on uh, the concerns that have been made by neighbors and evidently complaints. And I'm not sure that we have a firm answer on this, but what's What's the, the procedure on a special exception that's granted that if someone, and not necessarily just this one, but other ones, if someone's found in violation of that special exception, and I assume either the building commissioner or maybe the plant commission is taking over zoning enforcement, if they're found in violation and then maybe they appeal that violation, would come back to this board, I'm thinking, as an appeal of the administration officer, is there a possibility that they could lose their special exception if it was found that they did not meet the conditions in the special exception? Yeah, the procedures um, start with administrative procedure, procedure as you just indicated. Um, if the uh, person who has the violation alleged against them disagrees and says, wait, I didn't do that, then it would come to this body, and this body would be the body that would hear that appeal. Um, it could also, uh, result in fines, which would be the first level. Uh, it could also, in a, a serious case, um, uh, have a withdrawal of those um, special exceptions or any other privileges. That would, be in a, that would be in a court action where that would occur. And so uh, fines up through and including uh, withdrawal of the entire special exception. But that would be in an unusual, unusual case. All right. Thank you. Any, any other questions? I just, just comment, just trying to sure. think through this. Uh, obviously, there's some concerns from the neighbors that the operation doesn't seem to be following what the uh, people running the business think that it is. Um, and I'm, you know, expanding this doesn't necessarily increase the, the amount of people that are there. Um, so I'm kind of torn between maybe granting it and allowing them to try to solve some of the music problems by giving them some more inside space and uh, making sure they don't have music outside on the patio or but but denying it doesn't really help the the sound problem but being aware that that can circle back i mean ultimately at the end if it's not corrected they could lose their special exception is what i was thinking okay so I just wonder if anybody else had thoughts on that. And I mean, the, the issues I heard were, you know, noise, hours of operation, you know, the lighting, you know, it may be a, a good idea to work with your neighbors <coughs> to maybe plant some additional shrubs or something to try and prevent lights from being directed. I mean, either you have the, you know, where the drives are in order to, so I mean, it's, you know, if you can work with your neighbors to try and correct some of that, that may help as well. Um, 
As far as, uh, thank you for mentioning that. As far as the signage, we have to follow city, the code. And so we're not allowed to have lighted signs. That's, it's, it's actually not allowed. We can't have a light sh to shine on our signs. Right. So, so, I, I was so like, how do we, they want them to be lit up more. We have them, we have it as far out as we are allowed. The, the, um, I can't remember yeah. what department you're, you're that lim is. You're limited, you're limited in signage by our ordinance. Right, and, uh, and the gentleman the, came. Out. I mean, there, we do have, I mean, there is a variance process that mm -hmm. does allow yeah. you, I mean, if it is an issue, and maybe the neighbors would support that if that is an issue. I was getting at more the lights in oh. the house yeah. the, the, from the cars as opposed to lighting so, of the sign. Two things. Okay. Uh, I do have three solar landscape lights on our main sign by our driveway that helps a little bit. I was able to do find that. them on But Amazon, you'll notice yeah. on, the, on the view here, directly in front of the barn, there's a gap of trees there. That looks That's something that we could get filled in and it could be added to that, that we would do something like that. We've wanted to I, do I'm, that too. I mean, I, I don't know that it's necessarily a require. Yes. I mean, a commitment that we have to our right. condition. Right. Okay. I mean, we'll but gladly. It, but we will it's, gladly it's something do that. that you yeah, could we'll do gladly keep to, working on all of that. You know, work with the neighbors. You know, if we do approve yeah. this, because if we if we if we don't approve this, I mean, you're still in operation. If we do approve it, then you have that expansion. You do have that uh, possibly an additional noise buffer. Right. You know, as well. It's and not we will commit. The, we will commit to not letting. We'll just let our our guests know that they can't have music during their cocktail hour. That's, that's no problem. I mean, if that, uh, we constantly are asking if anyone has anything they need to know. No one said a word. Yeah. And so we had no idea that that was Nobody causing an issue. So they but, go out there because it's quiet and to have a yeah, smoke. Yeah, we, will, we, we don't need music out there. That's no problem. We will, we will eliminate that. So I, yeah. I think perhaps that's my question of, uh, do you understand the covenants that are currently in place for the operation of your business that music is not allowed to be amplified currently right. in any place in the exterior? Do you understand some Commercial some of these things? There, yes. um, uh, maybe um, yes, have a I better have relationship with your current neighbors. Because I, I swear that what I read that it was had a decibel thing. So I, I need to look at my paperwork again that I have that to make sure it is in matching because I, that is what I was under the assumption is that as long as it was very low, like but I think it was below 70 decibels is what I had in my head. So now it's saying that there's none. Now we're aware of that. Yeah. So we will make sure there's none out on the back patio. Um, I mean, people are gonna be talking when they walk in and out. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, where do you, where does the line get drawn for? I believe there's like, three of us that all have backyard pools and stuff and we're all out there screaming and having a good time and playing music. But, but that's personal though, that's at our home as is our neighbor's homes. But, but I, I guess to my point, the, the granting of our special exception for your, your current use mm -hmm. of your property um, as well as future use or expansion is uh, material or does not permanently injure other property owners in regards to traffic generation, placement of outdoor lighting, noise production, or hours of operation. So what we priorly approved in terms of traffic generation, outdoor lighting, noise production, and hours of operation, you guys fully understand or are operating under, correct? Right, right, I mean, yes. Yes, we, we have to have the parking lot that way. We have to have so much lighting in the parking lot by, by what's told. I, um, I mean, I, I don't know what to do about headlights. I, I, I don't, I've never heard that. This is new to us, so we will come up with an, a, a way to add more trees. Yeah, we'll work with the neighbors too. Uh, when we did daycare, I had a, I was pretty proud of myself. I built a 400 foot picket fence around for our daycare kids that was, that was this tall. If, if I placed a fence like that, something like that on the south side of the parking lot, that might at least uh, block some headlights as oh, cars mm -hmm. turn around, back up and turn around. Yeah, I'm right. hoping to yeah. do that. 
th okay. this is new information, so we're, yeah. we we got to figure that. This out. This was new out. right at this moment. <laughs> You have something Gary oh just the more I think about this you know I do hear the concerns from the neighbors mm -hmm. and uh, you know I think that I hear those but but and their request not to prove this but I think by approving this uh, extension does put more commitments on the operation by uh, uh, requiring them to get some uh, some more permits and approvals and really does not increase the capacity Mm -hmm. But and I think that they understand that if they're not resolved an enforcement action comes Ultimately, I don't know that we've ever seen one, but it could come back where you could lose your special exception That's pretty serious. I don't know. Yeah, it is pretty serious. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Them are rules to be followed, right? So that's why they have them. That's why it's a special that. exception That's why you have them. and you understand that so yes, okay yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you Last chance for comments or questions Hearing none, we've got a ballot. I have six ballots and five in favor to grant the special exception and one to deny the special exception. The special, the special exception is granted and you know, for the neighbors, I mean, if there are issues, please contact the building commissioner or area plan. Thank you. Administrative matters. We have none. Unless any member has an objection, the chair will order the findings of each member casting a vote for the majority decision of the board to be the collective findings of the board in support of the decision of the board. Hearing none, it is so ordered. And I'll take the last motion, please. Move to adjourn. We are adjourned.